Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us again. This is our weekly broadcast from the Versex Security Labs, looking at the uh, most risky and dangerous vulnerabilities that we've identified in the last week or so. Uh, this week, we're covering, I believe, the week starting November 29th, and uh, uh, joined, as always, by Satya Gupta, our founder and visionary CTO. Good morning, Satya. Morning, Billy. How are you? Good. So I guess another busy week, uh, close to a couple hundred new vulnerabilities. It looks like you've identified five plus the bonus confused deputy of the week, which is the yeah, security exactly. tool that's been, uh, could be sidetracked. So uh, why don't you jump into it, Satya, and tell us what we've got this week. Great. Let me share my screen with you. So uh, as always, you know, we start off by discussing how many vulnerabilities and if you remember this particular week from November 23rd to November 29th was a Thanksgiving week. So, you know, it was a quiet week in, I would say, and we only discovered 193 vulnerabilities as opposed to the 500 plus that we had uh, the previous week. And so, you know, I picked out, um, you know, five as always, uh, you know, five vulnerabilities that, um, you know, I thought were really um, high value. They were really uh, prevalent and many of them have actually got uh, um, uh, exploits, public exploits that are available. So, you know, that makes them especially dangerous. And, uh, you know, we always uh, tend to pick one uh, confused deputy um, uh, problem. So this time I've picked um, a malware uh, threat hunting platform uh, that uh, allows uh, people to break in and uh, change um, um, the threat feeds. So that isn't really a good situation to be in because if you're dependent on a thread feed um, and that thread feed itself is compromised, then, you know, all bets are off at that point. Sure. Okay, so let's jump into it. And again, we've integrated our new scorecard here with our Versec Risk Index. Absolutely. So what is Synology? Synology is uh, basically a storage uh, product that uh, basically also uses um, uh, you know, Active Directory or some authentication-based mechanism to allow access or not. Uh, so that's why the name Safe Access appears in, their, uh, you know, in this particular product's name. This particular uh, vulnerability is a SQL injection vulnerability um, in the management interface. And it turns out that, you know, uh, this can, uh, you know, this has a base score of 9.8, uh, you know, that uh, the National Vulnerability Database uh, has assigned to it. Uh, fortunately, there's no public uh, exploit, but, you know, a lot of uh, uh, products in the data center use Synology to store uh, their, uh, their content, essentially. So if Synology were to be broken into, then, uh, you know, all the content on the disk would uh, become available. And, uh, you know, a SQL injection vulnerability, as you know, is really, really uh, nasty because, you know, it allows you to run SQL commands and, you know, uh, SQL commands can be used to uh, uh, drop files and uh, drop tables and all essentially. And so, you know, it can create havoc uh, on uh, the server essentially that is uh, supposed to be serving. And I so, know, uh, you know, lots of talk this year with COVID, obviously, about the dramatically increased use of remote access to almost everything. So I imagine anything that's a remote access tool, uh, you need to be very cautious about. Exactly. And this is like a storage, um, you know, it's like in the network, in the data center. Synology is primarily used there, and it's the leader in this space. So, you know, it's uh, been marked as, um, uh, you know, the number one, uh, uh, you know, if I were to believe the... Uh, the site where all of this data came from, Synology, um, you know, tops uh, IBM and NetApp uh, in the storage uh, marketplace. Okay. And um, so this uh, particular vulnerability has, uh, you know, of course, you know, it's very high on prevalence. Uh, we use the network uh, attack vector. So anybody, a remote user can attack it. Um, the attack complexity is very low. So anybody can uh, attack that vulnerability. It uh, doesn't require any privilege, uh, no user interaction required, of course. You know, a remote user can actually completely pack uh, all the, uh, uh, you know, all the vulnerabilities in, um, you know, and exercise them uh, locally, uh, you know, on the particular server. Uh, it, uh, of course, you know, you cannot change the scope, so you cannot acquire different privileges and all. But, uh, you know, from a confidentiality and integrity and availability perspective, everything, everything that's on the Synology can be compromised. Fortunately, there's no public exploit, so you know it gets a risk rating of 82% from us. Okay. Uh, 
Um, and as I mentioned here, uh, you know, we have uh, the ability to protect against, uh, as far as Versec is concerned, our security platform, the Versec security platform can uh, has this uh, component that we call the VSP web that uh, has the capability to detect uh, all kinds of SQL injection attacks and be able to defend against that. And then not only that, you know, uh, if uh, for whatever reason, if uh, um, uh, the attacker has, uh, if you've intercepted them uh, before uh, some other attack has happened, um, you know, malware has been dropped, it'll protect any malware from ever running, uh, you know, on your host, uh, you know, on that particular server. So we have uh, uh, proactive support as well as, you know, inline uh, or not inline, I should not say that, but it has really, uh, you know, uh, protected at the infiltration stage is the word I was looking for. So really before it can do anything. Before it can do anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. So my second Now, WordPress is back. WordPress seems to be um, part of the greatest hits almost every week. I guess it's such a popular platform and open exactly. source and so many extensions. So what is, uh, what is we have this week? Yeah, so we have a plugin that uh, WordPress uses. It's called the Event On plugin. Um, and it's uh, basically uh, is used by almost, uh, uh, there are 60 million websites that uh, have, um, uh, you know, uh, make use of WordPress. And um, uh, so it basically allows, uh, this particular plugin allows uh, what is called a cross-site scripting vulnerability. So if I were to send you a phishing email and ask, uh, you know, you trust me well enough to click on that email, now I could install all kinds of nasty, uh, you know, malware on your uh, machine. Uh, so this uh, reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability is not a server-side attack, but it's more uh, um, a, 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 an endpoint, but it, because it traverses through the server, uh, the Versec has the ability to be able to uh, protect, uh, you know, customers that are, uh, um, that could become victim essentially, end users that could become victim. And uh, this one, even though it's been assigned a score of medium, uh, 6.1 by the C, uh, by the National Vulnerability Database, I feel because the public, uh, you know, the exploit is available uh, publicly, um, uh, this deserves a little bit uh, higher uh, uh, risk rating. And, um, you know, as you can see from the color coding um, in that uh, risk chart, um, it scores a little less on the confidentiality, integrity, and of course the availability, uh, because it's not doing anything to the server, it's attacking the endpoint. So that's why um, the availability is uh, not been affected at all. Uh, but um, uh, it uh, is uh, nevertheless, it's a very nasty exploit because, you know, you're kind of affecting your uh, customers, you know, end users who are sort of uh, innocent bystander in many ways, you know. So so that's why, if, uh, uh, you know, our own score is 76%, uh, which makes, puts it into the red category. And the scope is, is the highest. Uh, many of the ones we track have a le more limited scope, but obviously this one is affects yes. a lot of people. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is because I can run things on your personal laptop, I can uh, go and change, um, you know, administrative users. I can create new users. I can come in and log in into uh, the newly created user and also it can, uh, you know, it allows me to, score, you know, to explore other areas of your system that you may not, uh, you know, how when you log in, you have access to, you know, your, like in the case of Windows, you have C colon uh, users directory, um, C colon users slash Willy, for instance, in your case but I might be able to go and uh, explore everything in your disk, not just, uh, I won't be restricted to um, looking into your directories essentially, really. Okay. And so again, uh, with VSP, we would be able to protect, um, you know, uh, a website that has uh, this very dangerous cross-site scripting uh, vulnerability. And um, if you'll recall from the MITRE top 10, top 25 attacks, cross-site scripting is uh, rapidly headed towards the number one spot out there. So this is something to be really uh, careful of because you're not only, you know, the damage is not to, you know, the enterprise, but to its customers. So which is even worse because you can, there's nothing bad, worse that you can do to than to harm your own end users and all who trust you. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if, it, <laughs> if they find out where it came from. Right. right. My third vulnerability that I've picked out is a NPM package that runs on Node.js. This is a very in interesting um, uh, package uh, because it uh, you know helps the end users figure out you know what you're running uh, uh, on the server. So as the name in suggests, system information package. Basically, it gives you characteristics of the server essentially, and um, you know it has a command injection vulnerability, which means 
I can take over the server. And as um, you know, our good many of our good friends say, if you um, are running a server like that, you think you own it, but actually I own it. Um, you know, is uh, how we should look at it. And uh, you know, there's a publicly available exploit, so it's about as dangerous as it gets. So you know, we've rated it uh, um, at uh, 76%. And again, uh, with the Versex security platform, we have uh, two components, the VSP web um, and uh, uh, the VSP host. The VSP web would protect against this command injection vulnerability. And the VSP host would uh, prevent any uh, malware that would be running, that potentially could be running on that endpoint. And uh, we'd be able to put a stop to it right away. And I guess with a vulnerability like this, if you can take over a system that's really can be part of a whole kill chain of lateral access and it gives exactly. people a, a, a footprint in your network, which you certainly don't want, right? Exactly. So, you know, generally speaking, the bad actor uh, is doing uh, the following. They're using a vulnerability uh, to get into the door. And then once they're inside the building, then they can do unleash all kinds of things, you know, not just, um, you know, encrypt your stuff, but uh, exfiltrate stuff or, you know, the possibilities are endless. Sure. Hey, now we've got Rockwell Automation, so an uh, industrial control system vulnerability. Exactly. Factory Talk is a protocol that is uh, used to connect into the SCADA uh, layers um, and, um, and the uh, device network. And so this is really a nasty problem because, you know, if I can, um, uh, and this vulnerability has been assigned a score of 9.8 critical. Um, this has been reported by, you know, one of the vendors in the uh, IoT space. And um, uh, so it's basically, uh, you know, meant to uh, have your di disparate, um, you know, uh, industrial automation applications speak to each other. So if, um, you know, if we can actually get, um, you know, uh, if we can uh, use this uh, vulnerability to drop some new malware, then uh, pretty much all bets are off on, uh, you know, that industrial uh, automation plan. Again, you, you think you own it, but you don't. The attacker owns it and they can do... Uh, uh, whatever they wish but fortunately you know the good news is that uh, there's no public domain exploit but uh, you know um, once uh, something like this exists and enough detail exists in the disclosures uh, somebody could potentially create that um, you know a determined attacker or a nation state could very easily uh, recreate this little thing here and we know the nation state attackers are particularly interested in disrupting critical infrastructure industrial control systems absolutely also as we talked about before these the industrial control space kind of suffers from a legacy mentality of being isolated. And yeah. with COVID and remote access and all of these new digital um, transformation, all of this integration, they're, they're not isolated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's this example, there's a case study that's been published in this blog out here is uh, about a company called Valley Queen, which is one of the largest cheese producers in South Dakota. And uh, you know, if you could disrupt their operations for a day or a couple of days, um, they make, uh, believe it or not, they make 500,000 pounds of cheese per day. Wow. So that's a lot of cheese to be compromised. <laughs> a lot of cheddar. <laughs> and again, uh, we have uh, VSP support, we, VSP memory and VSP host can be used to prevent the infiltration phase and uh, any exploitation of any file or fileless malware essentially. And this is really in our in our sweet spot. This type of um, memory based attack, right during runtime. Absolutely. So my fourth uh, vulnerability is uh, uh, relates to something called a cron job. Cron jobs are used uh, to uh, fire off uh, uh, some executables at a predetermined condition when a condition is met. Let's say at uh, midnight, uh, you know, it just wakes up and it uh, you know starts executing some uh, operation that uh, you know the uh, something like log management, for instance, It'll go clean up the logs and uh, make sure that the logs are not blowing out of proportion, perform some uh, routine maintenance activities. And all. So this is uh, cron utils is a Java library. It basically parses and uh, runs through the cron jobs and uh, you know and uh, uh, will uh, uh, this this particular vulnerability this particular uh, uh, you know package suffers from a. Um, uh, remote code exploitation vulnerability. So it will, uh, it, it's received a score of 9.8 uh, and, um, and a public exploit is available. So if you look at the uh, risk score, uh, you know, other than the fact that it cannot change this particular vulnerability, cannot you know, help compromise um, uh, 
um, you know, the uh, scope, meaning if I were running as user A, can I find a, a user B's credentials and all? Uh, it's technically possible, really. So I'm kind of conflicted, you know, whether I should have marked it as a scope being a yellow or orange or red. But, uh, you know, I stuck with the national vulnerability databases analysis. Uh, we don't want to uh, ring alarm bells. Uh, you know, uh, it, it should be, you know, even without that, it is at a very high score. It's one of the highest uh, scored vulnerability in, uh, in this particular report. So it's 91%. So, right. you know, it will be well advised to uh, go update or at least deploy Versec uh, in your infrastructure to prevent, you know, these unknown vulnerabilities from ever compromising your infrastructure. And this is something we can protect against the buffer overflows and at the host level? Absolutely. So this is, um, you know, again, uh, VSP memory and VSP host can be used to protect against uh, uh, you know, these two kinds of attacks and also. Um, so this is, Versac will, uh, will absolutely protect you from um, these uh, two different attacks. Okay. My, now we have our weekly confused deputy. That's, um, I know, a common term, but it's almost a little too benign. If you can derail a security tool, that seems uh, pretty serious. Right. And it's a, uh, it's a malware, uh, you know, uh, a threat feed sharing platform. It's an open source platform. Over 6,000 downloads have, you know, there are 6,000 SIMs uh, or companies that are using this particular uh, framework. This particular vulnerability uh, is uh, been assigned a score of 9.8, which is uh, super critical. And um, it has, um, uh, you know, enough information is there in the GitHub uh, repository, how they fix it. So, you know, um, if I were a determined attacker, I could actually construct that exploit. So I'm kind of, um, you know, uh, that's why we mark the public exploit, uh, even though it's not available, but, you know, we kind of, uh, everything can be pieced together. So other than um, the, um, uh, the scope uh, not getting changed, which again, I'm in all these cases, really, if I can run uh, pieces of code on the server, I can pretty much uh, scrape memory and find out, um, um, you know, passwords for other users who may have accessed, uh, you know, through Active Directory. There's these tools that um, our team uses, Mimikat and um, uh, such like, that basically can scrape memory and can extract, um, you know, passwords from memory. So, um, so it's uh, being generous out there, but you know, I, I think this is a very risky. Uh, if you depend on the thread feed, um, you know, and your uh, your deputy is not feeding you the right thread feeds, uh, you know, it could make matters even worse because you know, uh, like uh, we have days when uh, hundreds of vulnerabilities are announced, and you know, many many of them would be uh, something that you'd need a, uh, you know, if you're using uh, behavioral techniques like uh, in like people do with IPS as well they'd get um, sort of um, be starved and therefore they will not be able to protect against uh, those recent attacks that, uh, you know, that made it meet their way through uh, in the last few days. So I would, uh, you know, say that, you know, uh, be sure that your deputy doesn't get confused. You have to have a Versex security platform running in front of it. Uh, and uh, any application that uh, does not impose um, ACLs properly is, can benefit from uh, the insider protect capability that's embedded inside of VSP web. Um, so that would be a good uh, protection to have there. Okay, uh, great. Looks like another, um, another good list. And um, we will be publishing these as individual blog posts as always. And you can also download the full weekly report from our website, uh, as well as uh, watch videos uh, related to these every week. Uh, thank you again, Satya. Any any closing thoughts? Well, um, you know, as always, you know, uh, patching, as we've always talked about, is good. But, you know, I can understand that, you know, most people find it really difficult to uh, disrupt their business. So, you know, having uh, a security control that uh, prevents uh, uh, infiltration and exploitation uh, is really uh, a better recourse than going through this uh, constant grind of patching. So, you know, uh, I'd uh, say please seriously consider putting a, a security control that can prevent infiltration and uh, exploitation. Versec is of course one of those good choices and uh, please uh, uh, look uh, seriously consider that for uh, the benefit of your own enterprise. And I can see from just the number uh, signed by uh, NIST on the last one, 29,006. So it looks like we're likely to break 30,000, which is a, we just broke 20,000 a couple of years ago. So that's a dubious distinction. But um, certainly the numbers are daunting, 
And if you're relying on patching, as you said, for your frontline defense, you're always going to be behind. In best case, it's, I think Poneman says 102 days is the average time to patch a vulnerability. So right. you, you definitely need an alternate strategy to close that, close that uh, window. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, a small anecdote here, Willie. Um, uh, when I first started in 2008-ish kind of time frame, we started looking at uh, NVD databases. There were a total of, uh, you know, and of course, as you know, the NVD database goes back all the way back into 1999. So in the first nine years, um, you know, we picked up 14,000-ish uh, kind of vulnerabilities into the national vulnerability database, just to put things in perspective. Now we touch uh, 20, 25,000 every year. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's staggering. Yeah, and also as you know, um, this week being Thanksgiving week, we had a little bit of a lull out there, uh, only 200 vulnerabilities got picked up. But uh, you know, you could see very easily how you know if there are more people at work who could qualify more of these uh, uh, of these vulnerabilities that were being reported, you'd see the numbers go up. So it's a little constrained by manpower. Sure. And, uh, you know, there are now these uh, very uh, clever tools that people have started using, and uh, you know, with the you know recent hacks, uh, you know, you can see that um, uh, many toolkits will get um, you know will come into play very soon. So, yeah. Yeah, another another uh, thing to be mindful of, and always be aware the attackers are getting more and more advanced. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you as always, Satya. Thank you to the audience for joining us. Um, again, we uh, post all of these reports weekly, and we post these blogs uh, individually. So, and of course, we'd love to hear from you if you have any comments or suggestions or additional input on any of these threats. Uh, we're trying to <clears throat> make this uh, information available, but we would love to make it interactive with our with the community. Thanks again, Satya. Talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye now.